like to thank you for your precious time. Let me introduce you in a few words. Mr. Robin Gatia is an educator and English language teacher with 32 years of experience in ESL and ELT. He holds a degree in education and Master of Applied Linguistics and TEFL and NSW Australia. He also worked as a coach on leadership, personal development, and professional growth. Outstanding Toastmaster of the year 2012-2013 and past president and current member of Lima Toastmaster Club. English language assessment, part of the University of Cambridge, board of directors at I. ATF EFL, director at Universidad Piwana de las Americas Language Center, current vice president of membership at Pathan Growth Leaders Advanced Toastmaster Club, member of the board of directors at ALVARO, which is a non profit association which provides voluntary assistance to people with emotionally needs. Director of the Language Center at Universidad de Piwana de las Americas. Master Trainer Certified by Camara Internacional de Conferencista, CIC. Master Coach at Organizzazione Mundial de Coach, Worldwide Organization of Coach, OMC. County Director of the International Internship University, IIU. City Coordinator at International English Language Teacher Association. In this workshop, Dr. Garcia will talk about assertive bilingual communication. In this topic, we need to understand how people communicate best and how they interact with every single person to remove traditional barriers in communication. Everyone has the capacity to communicate effectively their mother's tongue and other language to high level understanding the brain and its capacity to expand and learn a lot. As to open up a new opportunities by giving individual a clear purpose for their assertive and by providing opportunity to practice and practice again, they become highly motivated and expressing themselves with confidence. The biggest problem trouble to communicate well as our own emotions and feelings of NDKC while expressing ourselves so we can manage our feeling to gain confidence. Dr. Garcia, the floor is you. Thank you. Yes. Hello, everyone. Am I audible? Yes, I have some connection problems with this uh, laptop. I'm, I'm going to change my laptop, so please let me in the room. Yes, I'm. Uh, I, I did. I did admit for you. Okay. Now, now I I'm am trying in with to another. Give... I'm trying to give in you uh, to All right. the co host. Just I'm going to leave a few with this one. Okay. Okay, done. Okay, now I am in. Yes, I'm, a, I'm about to start. Let me set my, my camera. All right. Okay, just a minute. I'm about to start.
All right, everything is fine. Okay, so when we talk about communication and we use technology, these are the things that happened. So how can we deal with this in order to have effective communication today? So what I want to share with you is what we say when we need to talk about assertiveness. First, we need to clarify what assertiveness means. Yes, so assertiveness is just to think what you say, to say what you think. How many of you agree with this principle of assertiveness? I want to participate with you because you are part of my audience. And no matter the distance that we, I am in South America, in Peru, but you can collaborate with this talk because this talk is about communication and you can react. Do you know how to use Zoom reactions? There is a thumb up that you can have like this one. So what I have just said about assertiveness, that is to think what you say and say what you think. How many of you agree with this? Time's up. I, all right, I saw very few reactions. So what means that the rest do not agree? Okay, not a problem. That's not a big deal, great. So, I to share my screen in order to talk with this slides that I have prepared. Let me set this up for you. All right, wait a minute. I'm going to show you in a moment. Next is charging. Okay. It's my screen is all right. Now it's okay. So my internet connection is slow today. I don't know what's wrong with it. But not a, not a problem. We can still have great communication today. Just let me work, work with this. Okay. Slow today, but I will solve it because it was hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay. Everything is, is okay, Dr. Roman? Do you need any help? I think he's out. Dr. Robin, do you still with us? I don't know. I think he lost con uh, connection. He's out. Uh, 
Um, I'll give okay. you co-host. May I share my screen now, please? Yes, I'll give it to co-host. All right, I will check it out, okay. Oh, thank you very much. Most welcome. Great. Great. So look at those faces. Those are reactions. Reaction of what? So what it means? It means that the lesson they are getting is not interesting. So the question is, why is it not interesting? Is it because there is not good communication with the teacher, with the educator that is facing this situation here? Why not that? Why do they have that faces now? Why do they show those faces. At the beginning of the class, they can be like this. The problem is when they are like this during the whole class. So if you have students in the beginning of your class feeling this way, what do you need to do in order to have those faces like that? So look at those faces there. We have the contrast. And again, what is assertiveness? We said something about assertiveness, but let me complete the idea with this meaning. Let's read together. Assertiveness is a healthy way of communicating. It's the ability to speak up for ourselves in a way that is honest and respectful. Every day, we are in situations where being assertive can help us, like asking someone on a date, approaching a teacher with a question, or doing well on a job or college interview. Then, if assertiveness is communicating and expressing your thoughts, feelings, and opinions in a way that makes your views and needs clearly understood by others without putting down their thoughts, feelings, or opinions, assertiveness is the ability to express our thoughts and feelings openly in an honest, appro appropriate, respectful, and direct way. So we have heart to consider to be equally important. So heart stands for honest, H for honest, A for appropriate, R for respectful, and D of the red. So remember this acronym, heart. Let's talk about now very, very fast. Um, the basic assertive rights of every human being, what we mean by this. So, we have having dignity and self-respect. Dignity and self-respect, which is important as human being. And we have to say no when justified without feeling guilty. It's important to know how to say no, how to reject things. Not all the time we are going to be persuaded to do things. And sometimes convinced of things that we do not want to do, which is worse. Expressing your feelings, it's very important for us to manage our feelings. We can express our feelings, but we can manage them in order not to have bad feelings for such a long time. Asking for what you want directly. This is important. Directly ask for what you want. 
Feeling good about yourself. Being able to change your mind. How many times you have made a decision and where you were doing things in the middle of the process, you realized that that was not good. But were you able to change your mind to take another option? Negotiating and reaching compromises with conflict exists. Being able to make mistakes. Listen, mistakes are the ones that we know are incorrect. I once, I once heard that an error is different to a mistake. A mistake is something that you know is wrong, but you make one and once and again. And an error is something that you don't know that is wrong. In other words, while you're learning languages, because in this communication assertiveness, we need to know how to be bilingual. It's important to be bilingual and to understand these principles of communication. In order to be bilingual, we need to know our first language first. And we have principles of communication. To be bilingual, we need to understand what communication in our own mother tongue deals with. What I mean is that we need to develop three principles. Three principles for this communication process. Number one is the articulation. Articulation of every single word that you pronounce. It doesn't happened, or my question is, does it happen that sometimes you listen to someone speaking in your mother tongue, but you don't understand entirely the message? And then you have misunderstandings because misunderstandings exist in all the languages. How can we avoid misunderstandings? by pronouncing the words very clearly. Let me ask you a question. How many of you know your voice? How many of you know that the voice that people listen from you is the one that you know how you pronounce the words, the sounds that you produce. One thing, the voice that you listened from yourself is different to the voice that people listened from you. Did you know that? Okay. You have your cell phone with you? Let's have now an exercise. You are going to say a sentence in your language, in your language, to say a sentence of three words. That sentence in your language. I'm going to say that in English, but you tra translate it into your own language and use it. I, three words, huh? I am happy. I am happy. Say that, but now record 
record that phrase of three words. I am happy in your own language. In my language, it sounds like estoy feliz. Now that you have recorded that sentence in your own language, listen to it. You are using your cell phone now. I can see you. I can imagine how you are moving with your cell phone through this screen. Great. And how many of you heard your voice different? Please have the reactions. How many of you? Thumbs up if you have listened to your voice different to the one that you listen from yourself. Yes? Okay, very good, Hiba. Excellent, only one? Oh, great, so uh, the, the rest? Okay, Dina, again, we have now. Great, so that is the voice that people, that people listen from you. That it's important to know how the message that you deliver is heard because that makes you feel confident. And that is very important when you learn a, a, a foreign language. You need to be confident because if you are not confident, you cannot express yourself freely and you can have lack of fluency. You know, when you speak a language, you have to be fluent and accurate. But how to do this in a very good contrast? By practicing, of course. The message that you say in another language is a message that you already understand in your own language. When we have translation, interpretation, what happens? Our brain already knows the definitions of those words in another language. But in order to obtain that, what do we need? We need to practice. We need to practice a more practice in order not to translate every time. At first, we can translate. Let me tell you an example that I always say to people. I'm showing you something. You know and you understand in your own language what this is. You understand what it is, what I'm showing you. And then I tell you an another name for this. I tell you Stilo. Stilo is the name of this object in French. But immediately when I showed you this, your brain, what did your brain do? To think about this in your own language. So it means that we are accustomed to speaking in a language for the years that we, we have in our age. So that is what we have to deal with when learning a foreign language, when speaking a foreign language. At first, we need to understand the message, the names of the things in our own language in order to say them in a different language. And it is worse if we have different sounds. We have to articulate every single word in a very different language. If you know this, you can speak whatever language in the world. You can speak in French, you can speak in Russian, you can speak in German, you can speak in Chinese. 
but pronouncing very well. That is the first principle. The second principle is that you need to focus on the projection of your voice in order not to shout at the people. You can make emphasis of the words, but not shouting. And you have to measure the distance from one person to another, how distant you are. If you are an educator and you are in a classroom with 30 students, how can you make sure that the students at the back of the classroom can listen to you as well as the ones that are in front of you? Because everybody has the right to listen to you. Obviously, you don't have to be static. You don't have to be standing before your students. You have to move around the classroom as well. But your voice needs to be powerful. Your voice needs to be reached to every single ear. And the eye contact. You can see now, you see me with my eyes. My eye contact is not directly to the camera. Because in this laptop, the camera is here. It's on the keyboard. This is the camera on the keyboard. Now I'm looking at you. But I am accustomed to another laptop that the camera is just in front of me. So my, my eye contact with all of you is not good now. So what do I need? I need to get accustomed to looking at the camera as if you were with me in a room. Because this eye contact makes connection. This is important in very physical communication. That's the second principle. The third principle is that you need to work on your listening. Active listening, because we need to be active listeners. And I want you to think about an active listener in order to imagine a person using extra words that are not necessary in the communication. The words that we call grants, the words that are repetitive when you talk. For example, when people speak English, they say, so many times, so then, you know, this expression, how many of you have heard people talking in English and saying many times, you know? Reactions, reactions. How many times when they are talking to you, even presenters, people on webinars, and, they, and you know, and you know this, uh, and then uh, you know, and you know, and you count that you know, and you have like 20 or 30, but they are consciously say this because they have never, they have never worked on this extra words that are distracting on the message. So when you are an active listener, you, you are disturbed by this words. And you think about how many times we have to avoid this kind of extra words that do not help in the message. So with these three principles, we can, we can, we can really evitate, we can really avoid misunderstandings. And 
If we continue asking a question, am I assertive? Am I really assertive? We will have that. We need to read the questions and keep track of how many times you answer yes in this, the following questions. Okay, now the exercise is for you. You have to take notes of the course of the answers. Okay, or just remember how many yes and how many how many no's. And at the end, I'm going to ask you how many yes you have, how many no's. Okay, so keep track. Keep track of the answers you have. Am I comfortable meeting new people in social situations? Okay, answer yes or answer no. That's personal, personal answers. Again, am I, uh, okay, am I, am I comfortable meeting new people in social situations? Next. Am I able to say no without feeling guilty or anxious? Again, am I able to say no without feeling guilty or anxious? Can I express strong feelings such as anger, frustration, or disappointment? Can I easily request help and information from others? Do I feel capable of learning new things and performing new tasks? Am I able to acknowledge and take responsibility for my own mistakes? Can I discuss my belief without judging those who don't agree with me? Am I able to express my honest opinion to others, even if they don't agree? Do I tell others when their behavior is not acceptable to me? Can I speak confidently in group situations? Do I believe my needs are as important as those of others and should be considered? Can I assert my belief even when the majority disagrees with me? Can I express anger or disappointment without blaming others? Am I comfortable delegating tasks to others? Do I value my own experience and wisdom? How many times you answer yes? More than 10, you are consistently assertive and probably handle most situations well. So, how many of you had that score? Reactions? Yes, I can see. No, no. Great. Excellent. Fantastic. Less than 10, learning assertive behavior techniques will boost your score. Read the article closely. An article about assertive. So why does it matter? Why does assertiveness matter? Common barriers to assertiveness. <laughs> These are the common barriers. Some people fear repercussions of acting assertively or may lack the skills to express themselves effectively. They may believe that they don't have the right to be assertive. 
Communicating assertively will not guarantee the other person will change his or or her behavior and give you what you want, but it will help you establish limits and boundaries with others. Then, if we are passive, we mean that we are emotionally dishonest, indirect, inhibited, self-denying, blaming, or apologetic. So other rights and needs take precedence over mine. This is the passive one. The passive aggressive, emotionally dishonest, indirect, self-denying, at first self-enhancing, at expense of other later of others later and suddenly make clear that my rights and needs prevail or perhaps we are in the aggressive position when we are inappropriately honest direct expressing attacking blaming controlling self-enhancing and expense of others I boldly insist that my rights and needs prevail. Now, this is the one we need, assertive. And this is what I want you to take for granted. Appropriately honest, direct, self-enhancing, expressive, self-confident, empathetic to emotions of all involved. I clearly express that we both have rights and needs. Let me show you four essential steps to assertive communication. One, tell the person what you think about their behavior without accusing them. Tell them how you feel when they behave a certain way. Tell them how their behavior affects you and your relationship with them. Tell them what you would prefer them do instead. Then assertiveness means that he stands up. We have these four points. I win, you win, I lose or you lose. So if I'm aggressive, you are passive, you are going to be in that square. Demand, win, lose. We're both assertive. We are going to negotiate. Means win, win. This is very important in business as well. Negotiate. In all, in all the relationships, it's important to negotiate. Members of the family, members of the community, members at work. And we're both part, we're both aggressive, withdraw, we both lose. If I am passive and you're aggressive, concede one lose and the other win. One loses and the other wins. Then assertiveness and communication competence. What do we have? It's that there is a wide body of literature of assertiveness and assertiveness training. Assertiveness is defined as the practice of behaviors which enables individuals to act in their best interests or stand, or stand up for themselves without art and due anxiety, or to express their rights without denying the rights of others. What is said? It was said by Alberti and Emmons in 1970 and Wolpe in 1969. So these concepts have been existed, have existed for, for many, many years, and we put still in practice. But what is the formula for effective communication? The goal of the X, Y, Z, that is a good formula, which is, to express the way you feel, internal world, in response to others' behavior, 
the, the external world, in a specific situations, you are the only person who has access to your feelings. Others have no access to your internal world. The only way they will know what you are feeling is if you tell them. Similarly, you only have access to other people's external world. It is very easy to make a mistake when trying to guess what others are feeling or intending. Well, yes, if I feel X, it means I feel angry. When you do Y, you leave your socks and underwear on the bedroom floor, for example. In situation after work, and I would like, so that is one, I feel X, when you do Y in situation Z, and I would like, and I would like to put them in the hamper. So I feel angry. Why? When you leave your socks and underwear on the bedroom floor after work, and I will like you to put them in the hamper. Another example, I feel insignificant. When you left me with an empty gas tank yesterday, I would like you to leave the car with at least a quarter tank of gas. Now the situation, I feel angry. How do you feel when you did that? In this case, when you don't call me, you are staying late at work, for example. And I would like you to call as soon as you know, you will be late. I feel loved. When you kiss me, wow, when you get home. And I would like you to do that every day. Very important to know. Look at that. And is that good communication? You can be involved with others, telling them what they need to do, but not telling them that they have to, but try to persuade, try to invite them in order them to feel interested in doing what you would like them to do. Like this, things, some pictures involving me in some assertive communication with the students and having those faces of entertainment, having those faces of enjoyment. Because our labor as educators is to tell our students that we really like to do what we do, which is teaching. And they would like to be our students because we both are passionate in being involved in those situations. Thank you very much. And let's keep in touch. You can find me in my Facebook with that. This is about good communication. And I hope you have had a great time Tonight in Beirut, afternoon in Lima, Peru. If you have any questions, I can be for some minutes, few minutes to answer anything that you have in mind. Back to you, dear moderator. Yes, all right. Anything you want? Okay, I can read any questions if you would like. Uh, ah, about the registration link, uh-huh. <laughs> so people are asking about the registration link around. Okay, uh, girls, please put that. Thank you, girls, thank you.
So anyone want to ask any question for Dr. Robin? Uh, because he's, uh, he's waiting for any questions. You can raise hands if you want. Of course, we appreciate his, uh, his time and we, we want to thank him for this fruitful uh, workshop. It's, it was very uh, interesting, really. So uh, I think someone, uh, so doctor, uh, someone is asking how to express our feelings without hurting others. Uh, that's a very good question. And that's part of being assertive. The first thing is that you have to be direct of what you think about others. Oh. But for example, what happens if your best friend is uh, in a meeting with you and he or she wears an outfit that you know that does not fit him or her very well? What are you going to tell him? It means that you have to be, you have to be honest because you're a friend of his or her. But you don't have to tell him in a very bad message that that dress or that outfit that doesn't fit him or her very well. It means you are not going to say, oh, that dress is ugly in your, in your body <laughs> or you look terrible with that outfit. No. You don't have to say that, but you have to be honest. So what should you say? And what, because the message is that your friend does not look good wearing that piece of clothes. Isn't that the message? So wh what do you need to tell him or, or what do you need to tell her? You need to to make them feel that the choice that they had in selecting that piece of clothes was not a good one. But without hurting feelings. So you can say, well, I think that that, that is a, a good piece of clothes. That's a good dress or that is a good suit if it is a, if it is a man. <laughs> But I think that it's not your size. So that's soother than that is ugly. And then you can ask or you can be empathetic with them. Probably you were in a rush that you didn't try out different uh, sizes. That can be in an example with, with clothes, but there are other examples in projects. When you know the people are doing something bad in a bad way, how can you make them be conscious or be concerned about that, but without hurting their feelings. In other words, there is a magic word here, feedback, feedback, because the feedback is always positive. There is no feedback negative because a negative in a negative is critic, no feedback. Feedback is positive. And the critic can be negative. You criticize because you are looking for the bad points, the bad things, the bad sides of the things. But when you give feedback, it means that you enhance the good things, but suggest for betterment. 
that is to be assertive. That's why it says, I said at the beginning, to think what you say, to say what you think. Okay, we have uh, another question from Dr. Brahim Shukri. How can we make a fast motivation to people who don't act quickly? Great, that's a very nice question because motivation. Motivation means with movement. Motivation means movement in action. So, it involves energy. If you have no energy, yeah, you cannot motivate. You can show passion. The things that you really say and do in a very positive way. Put energy in that. Be passionate. And that will be contagious. And people will act immediately. If we talk about leadership, is how leaders persuade people to act. How leaders invite people to be involved in your projects. It's by being a model, modeling. Because if you do not like the project, if you are the boss and you don't like something that you have to do, you are going to project that. You are going to reflect that. And people are going to absorb that bad energy. And they are going to be with lack of interest. And they are not going to act immediately. You have to put energy in what you do in order then to get that energy and act in the same way you do. If you want people acting fast, you have to act fast. That is the only thing. Ah, that, that is an interesting question here. Does that mean that, no, no, I didn't say that we shouldn't criticize. We have to criticize in different situations. So, for example, if a person, you know that a person is dishonest, is acting in a bad way, you have to criticize them. You cannot give him a feedback because to be dishonest is not, nothing good. What are you going to enhance a positive thing in dishonesty? That you have to criticize. To say what you are doing is wrong. You should change. You have to be honest. So that is the things that you know that it's wrong. If a person is smoking too much, how can you give it back to that person? You have to criticize him or her. Don't smoke too much because that's harmful for your health. You are doing a wrong thing. I have another question here. Yes, of course. Uh, if someone abusing us very, very much to give him a certain information and we don't want to tell him about it because it's very secret. So how can we change the topic automatically? Yeah. Can you repeat that question, please? Yes. If, it is yeah. uh, if someone abusing us very, very much to give him a certain information and we don't want to tell him about it because it's very secret. So how can we change the topic automatically? Let's uh, okay. All right, all right. Well, you are saying something very important. 
you are using a word that is not positive word, abuse. So how can we change that abuse? Because abuse is if it is something negative, how can we have it? How can we turn into something positively? How can we need to change that act from people? For example, I know that him is abusing and asking me too much about something that is a secret or is something that is private. And you want to change the topic. Well, it's like, okay, um, we need to insert a word which is respect because abuse is lack of respect. Then if someone is abusing in asking you so many times, you have to stop him and saying, hey, wait, 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 just a moment. Just asking me for something a couple of times is enough. You don't have to ask me for something. But the, the only answer is going to be the same, that I cannot tell you this thing. I cannot express myself in that way because it's something private. It's something confidential. You have to make them understand in order not to proceed in a negative way because abusing is something negative. And you don't need to change the topic automatically. No, you need to set up the things. You need to change what is negative into into positive, to, to, to change that abuse in order him or her to understand what is respect. No lack of respect is permitted because once you permit the lack of respect, it's going to be like a snowball. It's going to be bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger that at the end, is going to be on you. No, no, no. You have to stop things, negative things from the very beginning. Okay. Thank uh, you for the question. We have uh, the last question. How to be tagged oh. with people who always uh, hurt our feeling with honest conversation? Ah, <laughs> interesting. That is a big, a big contrast, no? You're saying hurt our feelings with honest conversation. Okay. It means if you are assertive, you don't have to hurt the feelings of people. So the question might be, how can we deal with people who are not assertive? Okay, now I understand. The people that hurt your feelings. Well. The first thing is that we need to, to show the people the way we behave. We need to let the people know us. They need to know what disturbs us. They need to know what makes us feel angry. If that means that the way he has to be, and it's not assertive, we have to show them how to be assertive. That's the best thing. Because you want people to be assertive with you because you are assertive. So the first thing is to show him or her this principle. And in that way, it's not going to hurt your feelings or someone else's. Okay, uh, I see that uh, Mr. Zahar uh, wants to say 
do we have to be honest with all people or do we have to be soft with them? Yes, uh, honesty means that you are, that you don't hide anything. You have to be kind, don't say soft. You have to be kind. And that kindness show people that you have the right words to say in order not to hurt their feelings. But if that involves positive things at the end, because I said that it's, it's good to criticize. When you know that people are doing wrong things and they are damaging not only themselves, but the people around them. For example, if you have a friend who drinks too much every weekend, you have to tell him, stop it. You're doing something wrong. You are drinking too much. In that way, you are being honest, of course. And you're criticizing the way he behaves, the way he does his, oh, that, the way he performs during his, his life or the way he entertains himself. So you have to be honest and kind whenever you need. It means that sometimes you have to be energetic and you have, you have to refuse many things. In that way, you are not going to be kind. What happens if you are driving in the middle of the road and somebody crosses the red light and he comes to you and he blames you instead of accepting that he was the guilty of that hit of your car. In that way, you don't have to be kind. All right, you don't have to shout, but you have to be energetic and say, hey, you passed the red light. You shouldn't have done this. What do you think you are? Energetic to show people that what they do is wrong. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Robin. It was uh, really a very interesting uh, workshop. Uh, I think uh, all uh, attendees have uh, the same words that I will say to you. So thank you so much for your precious time. Uh, and uh, we hope that we will make uh, another workshop with you or uh, something, a course or whatever. So thank you again. And uh, thank you all the, to all of you, the attendants in the Translators Union. Uh, see you again as soon as possible. Good night. Thanks to you. Thanks to you. I, I, let me finish with this. I have just read a very interesting question yeah. say, that says, my yeah. friends always ask me to do their tasks, like helping oh. them. <laughs> How can I say no without hurting their feelings? But no, you don't have to do the tasks of others. You have to invite them to do their tasks because you are not doing any favor to them. You are helping them to get accustomed to doing something wrong because you are you are not giving them enough responsibility to do what they need to do it's like parents parents you don't need to do homework of your of your children <laughs> let them do their homework and in the office everybody has a task so they have to comply with the deadlines. Don't do that. That's not good, definitely. Yes. Exactly, it's not good. 
Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, good night. Good night, everyone. <laughs>